This is our planet Earth, and 71% of it is covered by oceans. And although we live on the land, our oceans also are like our home, our blue home. The world's oceans drive global systems that make the Earth habitable for humankind. The oceans also carry the bulk of the world's trade, are a major source of food and employment, and regulate the planet's weather, climate, and the air we breathe. And our blue economy, with a huge fridge where we can find our food, and with a huge air conditioner that regulates our temperature, just like the ocean regulates our climate by absorbing heat, and with a huge garbage can where we can throw out our carbon dioxide, which the ocean then turns into oxygen that we can breathe. And this functions like an oxygen pump that we need to survive. Remember, there is oxygen from the ocean everywhere. Because half of the world's oxygen comes from the sea, the ocean is an important source of fresh water, food and medicine. It even regulates our climate by transferring heat across the globe. The ocean has always connected people, goods and ideas around the world. It's also a source of inspiration and fun. Many people make a living from the ocean. Now, this beautiful blue home is in danger because of us, because we pollute, because we overfish, and because we produce more carbon dioxide than our oceans can handle. It even makes them acidic. We all impact the ocean by what we put into it and what we take out of it. By understanding the ocean's influence on you and your influence on the ocean, it is possible to make choices that are more ocean-friendly and therefore better for our future. This is what ocean literacy is all about. What you do every day makes a difference. Be part of the change. Ocean education is about the promotion and application of knowledge, skills, attitudes and values for our sustainable future. UNESCO's Intergovernmental Oceanographic Commission and partners are coordinating the second international Indian Ocean Expedition to improve our relationship with the ocean through the development and dissemination of scientific knowledge. By strengthening a network of scientists and institutions to address present and future global challenges. It's very important that we are working in close collaboration with organizations such as IOC at UNESCO. That's where the good science resides. By developing this global ocean acidification observing network, we're actually piecing together information and, and data from around the world um, that is showing how ocean acidification is affecting uh, local areas, local biology, uh, oysters, for instance, in the Pacific Northwest. The actual impact of the dying oyster larvae was due to acidification. We were able to change the water quality of the water that was coming in by adding base to the water and raising the pH and actually enhancing production. And allowing us to share that data globally so that other areas that are experiencing the same thing can recognize um, the symptoms. The huge challenge is to maintain the volume and quality of goods and services that the ocean is providing to humankind while sustaining ocean ecosystems. Uh, the take-up of maritime spatial planning is increasing worldwide and a significant body of experience has been developed. SpinCam has been implemented with the support of the Intergovernmental Oceanographic Commission of UNESCO. We are trying to bring together at the national level the marine data management community who has a lot of information about the, the environment and the coastal situation and the needs of the coastal management authorities. SpinCam has created a framework of environmental and socioeconomic indicators at national and regional levels 
to help assess the state of the coast, support decision making, promote partnerships, and improve collaboration between institutions. Then at the regional level, we are taking the same approach. We are bringing together the countries to measure and populate a number of indicators that we have defined jointly. And this information is then used to support the implementation of the regional action plan, the Lima action plan. Making good decisions will depend on the quality and availability of information. The future of our countries depends on the proper management of our coastal resources. There is always a connection between people and the environment. Now we're at a situation where all of mankind has to make a decision. There's some good news. In September 2015, the UN made a plan for our oceans. SDG 14, Sustainable Development Goal number 14. It's supposed to make us use our oceans in a more sustainable way. From 5 to 9 June 2017, in the UN, they will gather to discuss where we stand with this plan. This is where the Ocean Conference will be very important. It will be that moment of accountability uh, as to what human beings are doing to the ocean. And uh, will be the time when we make proposals and pledges, partnerships, correct the damage that we've been doing. All these different partners, they need data about our oceans and the scientific observations you need to get those data. They cannot design those solutions in isolation from each other. And that is why UNESCO's Intergovernmental Oceanographic Commission proposes to connect these partners. This cooperation framework will connect all these different perspectives and stakeholders to the same issues they are working on but in a more coherent way, together, before it's too late.